People who've lost everything salvage what they can from a pile of smouldering hot rocks. A few days ago, this was a river of lava. It came gushing out of Mount Nyiragongo, Africa's most active volcano, into the city of Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Samuel Kambale's neighbourhood is gone. His house caught fire before it was engulfed. All that's left are the charred remains of a tree he once planted to mark his land. The volcano was lighting up. It was a panic almost everywhere. So I took my family, put them on my motorbike and sent them into town. I stayed behind to keep an eye on the situation. People we spoke to who evacuated early say their houses were looted. That's why some stayed to protect homes and livelihoods until the last minute. Not everyone got away in time. Mohindo Binyeni Nicola has been missing since the eruption. He used to trade groceries on the street from a stall just like this one. He's a young man in his early 20s. His family put up the posters around the neighborhood. He lived in a home just down here and their fear is that he was engulfed by the river of lava when it came crashing through the city. And now it's turned into a pile of sharp, heavy rocks. It seems the chances of finding him now are slim. Since the initial eruption, new earth tremors started and they just haven't stopped. Adelbert Mohindo and his team of volcanologists have been monitoring them. He's barely slept for the last week. Tremors came before the past eruptions. They're trying to work out why, this time, they started after. Late at night, we started feeling the strong ones. On the day of the eruption, there was no sign of tremors. Nobody felt it. It was that night and the following day when people started feeling those earthquakes. Nobody knows if that means another eruption is coming, so parts of the city have been declared a red zone. More than 400,000 people have fled to other towns. Many of them are sleeping rough. We left as the authorities told us to. When we arrived, the first problem was no food and no water. So we decided to come back. Then we found that everything had been stolen from our house. So we are going to stay in this red zone, whatever will happen. We prefer to die here instead of going somewhere else. The province has been under the control of a military governor for the past three weeks because of ongoing conflict with armed groups in the countryside. The army has said help is on its way to the displaced people. Swathes of the countryside and parts of the city have been devastated. Nobody knows if it's over yet or not. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo. David Rothery is a professor and volcanologist at the Open University. He says Nirogongo remains dangerous. There have been quite a lot of earthquakes which are associated with the movement of magma or lava underground. And it's not quite clear where, if anywhere, that that lava will emerge. But there are fissures opening. So the main event at Nirogongo is not yet over. There's magma underground which as it rises to the surface because it's hot and buoyant, it fractures the rock, and that's what causes the earth tremors. And this may break out high on the mountain and come downhill really quickly, or it may break out right under the city and not spread very fast, but it will be right uh, in, in town already. And maybe the worst possible scenario is lava emerges on the floor of a neighboring lake. This is Lake Kivu, one of the African Great Lakes. Um, it may be a stratified lake with a lot of carbon dioxide gas at the bottom of the lake, which if that gets overturned and degasses, you have a lot of suffocating gas released. Um, some of the eruptions from the volcano summit are explosive, so that throws ash particles, that's tiny fragments of rock into the air, it's called volcanic ash. And that's dangerous to breathe. There are also the earth tremors, some buildings are damaged already, it won't take much of an earth tremor to bring them down again. So buildings that are already damaged are vulnerable to to further earthquakes. And then there's a risk of carbon dioxide gas, which will collect in the low points of the topography. That will be right along the lake shore. So it's, it's not a happy place to be.